own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. So he judged himself. You hear people all the time, they tell you everything about the law, and they are not doing it. They will tell you all that, what you doing? Ain't it y'all sad? Why are you calling? What you doing? You ain't out there working on the Sabbath. Like, no, I'm just doing this right here. I ain't doing it for the Lord. They call me when I'm doing something on the feast days or something like that. Y'all don't supposed to be working. Y'all moving stuff around and all this and that. We're not working for wages. We're doing it for the Lord. He's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Go ahead. This is what happened. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow. What verse you at? 22. Okay. 22. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 23. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury. Now he said, if you had the money, why didn't you put it in a banking account? Why didn't you put it in a mutual fund? You couldn't go out there and produce something. Put it in a fund that would grow interest. Interest is usury. Why didn't you do that? You didn't want to do nothing but put it in your pocket. Make it, maybe he won't ask for it. Now he won't ask for it. Go ahead. 24. And he said unto them that stood by, take from him the, the pound and give it to him that had ten pounds. Take it from him. Give it to the one that know what to do with it. Go ahead. And they said unto him, Lord, he had ten pounds. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. All this metaphorically speaking about the kingdom. The kingdom. Right now, if we do right, we're going to have authority over some cities. But if we're not doing right by what he's given us upon this earth, he's talking about money right here. You ain't doing right by that. How can he trust you? How? He can't trust me if I don't want to give up my money. Especially he gave me the talent to cut out. And I can't give some back to him? Crazy, man. Go ahead. 27. But those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them. Wait a minute, so I'm an enemy of God because I didn't do what I was supposed to do with the money? An enemy. I didn't say it, he said read it again. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Mm, that's tough, man, that one. Come on over here and let me slay you. Slay you, kill you. This is what you bind in. Finally, he's looking at it all. We got to be accountable for everything. It's just one section of the Bible we deal with. Let's go to Luke chapter 23. Let's look at another man. God wants us to find good deeds on earth so he can remember us. Sure, I'll be in my room telling God what I've done. Hey, this is what I did now. Come on, Dad. I can talk to him like a kid. Some people hear my conversation, they're like, I ain't never heard him say that. I come to him like a kid. Luke chapter 23, verse 39. Now, this is what happened to the thief on the cross. Let's see what he binds so he can get something loose here. The last breath he bound something. He told Jesus something. Verse 39. Go ahead, brother. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, yes, sir. If, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. So two thieves on the cross, one railed on him, talking about, man, get yourself off the cross and save us all. If you be Christ, you're supposed to be all that, get yourself off the cross and save us all. And listen to what the other guy said. Go ahead. Verse 40. But the other answer, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? He said, man, shut up. Don't you fear God? Man, with the same combination? Put some respect on him. Go ahead. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. See, this man is speaking truth on his deathbed. On the deathbed. And Jesus listening. He binding some here, so God don't lose something to him. Go ahead. 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Ain't that the same thing what Nehemiah was talking about? Remember him. For what he did, he received salvation right then. What did Jesus say? 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. That man got salvation on his last breath. 
died on the cross. He said, today you will be with me in paradise when I come into my kingdom. Jesus ain't in his kingdom right now. He's at the right hand of the Father. That's the Father kingdom up there. He got to come to Jerusalem to get his kingdom. Yes, sir. And that thief on the cross, he will be there. I'm going to look for him. You finished with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Galatians chapter 6. We just learned how to bind stuff, man. I want to know. I want to know when I'm dying. Folks, I don't want to know when I'm dying. I want to know exactly when I take my last breath. I want to know. I don't want it to sneak up on me. Because I want to make sure I get this slate clean. Galatians chapter 6, we'll start with verse 7. Because we got to understand that whatever we're sowing, we're going to reap. We're going to reap it. Let's sow some good seeds here. Let's mine some good stuff so God can lose some good stuff from heaven for us. Verse 7, go ahead. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yes, sir. He said, be not deceived. God ain't mocked. Whatever you sow, whatever you bind yourself to, God ain't mocked. Don't laugh at him like he's not a man that's going to lie. He's going to deliver the business to you and me. Come on. He's going to deliver. Amen. He ain't going to pray. Go ahead. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Yes, sir. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So you sow to the flesh by lying, fornicating, Commit adultery, all those things, you're going to read the corruption of the flesh. And he tells you, you got to sow to the spirit. What is the spirit? He said, the words that I speak that are spirit, they are life. This is what you sow until you get into the word and you remind him. And also you do what he says. We all do this. Go ahead. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's the problem with a lot of people. They ain't got no willpower. I've been praying for this all along. It ain't came yet. Maybe because you like a wind, you like a wave in the sea, you're going backwards and forward. Yeah. You unstable. That's, right. That's why you receive what you want. You can't be unstable like that. God said you won't receive nothing from him. Period. You finish with that? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Just making sure that we understand what to bind. So God won't lose stuff. Evil stuff is on us. I'll show you about these words here. Revelation 20 and verse 11. Everything going to be accounted for, y'all. Everything. Everything. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. When you get a brother, go ahead. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, mm -hmm. and there was found no place for them. Believe me, you don't want to be here. Standing before the great right throne, you want to miss this part. And you can miss it if you get into Jesus' kingdom. And being a God, you can miss this part. These are the people that came up in the second resurrection. Go ahead. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, mm -hmm. and the books were opened. What book? What book? This book right here that people don't want to read. The book's going to be open. And God's going to judge us on what's written in this book. Go ahead. And another book was open, mm -hmm. which is the book of life. So he got a book, which is the Bible. And he got a book of life to see if your name going to be in it. So he judged you off of everything you hear. And he said, okay, let's see. Did you make a cut, Jeff? Mm, yeah, you got in by one sin that you didn't commit. That's what he said. Bad, I'm going to do myself, man. I ain't do somebody. I'm going to get in. <laughs> I want to get in. I want to hit I want to get in. He said the rights are going to be scarcely the same, right? Mm -hmm. That's bad. Go ahead. And middle of 12. And another book was opened, which was which is the book of life. Yes, sir. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. See what I'm saying? According to their works. What your works look like? What you doing for the Lord? Just doing stuff, chick. 
You ain't got to tell me now. Just do a self-check. Because everybody individual right here. You got to make sure that you're doing what you can do. You know you can do better, you'll do better. But some of them won't. Go ahead. 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Mm -hmm. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. When he said death and hell, he talking about the grave. Yes, sir. Talking about the grave. He ain't talking about that lake now. That lake coming up. Go ahead. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. According to what? Their works. Works. So his books are open. He judges us by Genesis, Revelations, Matthew, Luke, and John, Exodus. He judges by all this stuff that we're supposed to be learning of our 70 years and we're so blessed to be in. But we just messing around and don't learn this stuff and follow it. Your book, your judgment gonna be real quick. Boom, put him in like fire. He ain't gotta think twice if you ain't dealing with this book. Go ahead. Verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The death and hell talking about ain't nobody gonna die no more. That condition hell ain't gonna be no more. He's gonna cast it in the lake of fire. Meaning that you know, all the people that go in there, they're gonna be in the lake of fire too, because ain't nobody gonna die no more. Nobody. Death is just rest. He gonna resurrect everybody else back up. Go ahead. 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Mm. This is where we do not want to be. So find good stuff. So God can lose good stuff. Be about his business. Do something. Anything. And you believe me, with this social distancing, we know you can't do very much, but that social media can touch a lot of people. You can post a lot of stuff. I'm really on that. That's it, man. That look like y'all want some more y'all want me to keep going? I got a little more now. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18. I want to read this in a way. Just buying the right stuff, y'all. Proverbs 18. One verse here. Verse 21. Go ahead. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So you got an option here. What you buying in? in your tongue? What you saying? Because all those words are being written down. God said, I can remember the hats on your head. You think you can't remember the words? Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 9. Let me show you something about how you remember. This last one. Ezekiel 9. cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, mm -hmm. even every man with his destroyed weapon in his hand. Now God is Jesus talking about, God is talking about these angels right here. This is who he uses to record everything. Everything that we do. You got six angels running around here recording stuff. Go ahead. Verse 2. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north. I know he said men, but these ain't men. These are angels. Go ahead. And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. Mm -hmm. And one man among them which was one man among them was clothed with linen. Yes, sir. With the writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. So this one angel got a writer's inkhorn meaning a pen. He went in, stood beside the brazen brazen altar, which is God's throne, and he reported. Tell him what he have seen on all of us. Go ahead. Verse 3. And the and the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. So we know we're dealing with an angel here. He said the cherub. The cherub angel. Go ahead. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and, and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. See, it's real critical 
that we cry for all the abomination. You see homosexuality? Correct it. Cry. Tell them that it's wrong. You see them eating unclean food? Abomination. Tell them that it's wrong. You see all this abomination in the world? Tell them. If you see Tyler Perry, tell Tyler Perry, take that dress off. It's wrong. You don't want to tell 22 and 5 said, man, should I put on a woman garment? It's wrong. Yes, sir. Terry Martin is wrong. All them comedians, all those actors, it's wrong. So we crying for that abomination. When I see that stuff now, I don't laugh like I used to. I used to cut up by it. Not no more. Not with men in dresses no more. Go ahead. Verse 5. And to the others he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. This is what God tells these angels that report him now. He put a sign on these people who are silent and crying. He not separate women, children, and babies. He killed them all. Go ahead, he's gonna tell you. Verse 6. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children. So you think because you 70, 80 years old, God won't slay you? You don't care how old you are. I mean, I'm old. I'm old. No, he's gonna kill you. Slit your throat. Because the blood don't be upon a horse's bridle. Where do you think that blood coming from? For people who do not follow the word of God. Go ahead. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women. Like the children. And little children. You gonna kill the children? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And began in my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. So he began all the way up there through the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of them be it, began at everybody, the ancient men. All the way down to us. Old men. All the way down to us. He going to be deal with what? The house of Israel got to be judged first. He trying to see who's going to get in that thousand year reign. Go ahead. Verse 7. And he said unto them, Defile the house and, the, and fill the courts with the slain. Mm. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. That man just went forth and just killing people, man. But watch what Ezekiel say, man, about our people. Go ahead. Verse 8, and it came to pass while they were slaying them and I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Our Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel and thou pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? You see what he said? We some stiff necked and hard headed people. He going to have to almost destroy us all. He said the children of the kingdom going to be looking on the outside because we hard headed. We think we can do what we want to do. God said, look, man. Ezekiel said, man, you're going to kill all the Israelites? But a few made it. Don't think how you special you Israel. You better be special doing this work. Go ahead. Verse 9. Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood. And we know how to sin still today. Exceeding great. Look at, the, look at the music. Who at the top of the list? Israel. Look at all the breaking of the Saturday. All the athletes. All the uh, basketball games. All of them played on the Saturday. And they're using us for merchandise. Our people. Read that again now. Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. Mm. And the land is full of blood. And the city full of perverseness. For they say, the Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. Crazy, man. That's what they're saying today. They're saying this stuff today. Like, ain't no God. All this destruction going on the earth. Ain't no God. No, oh, man. You better know God is the author of it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Verse 10. And as for me also, mine I shall not spare. Neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. Because when God sent that angel, he ain't going to pity you because you got a child. He ain't gonna pity you because you got you old. Only thing he's looking for is that mark. What it meaning that your mind, what is on? If it ain't on by, if it ain't got on God business, you dead. I'm dead. Go ahead. And behold, verse 11, and behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter. Wait a minute, he reported? Reported the matter. He report everything. This is what people got to understand. That God got an angel right there writing this stuff down. And he said, man, how can... Man, this is an angel who can destroy this whole world if he wanted to. He don't sleep. 
Go ahead. Start at 11 again. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. So that's the recorder. He's going to bring everything up in the judgment and say, hey, this Jeff rap, she's right here, Lord. I got him. This is book right here. This, this, this camera book right here. And he's going to go through, he's going to judge. He's going to judge. I ain't going to hold y'all. All right, we're going to take up the offering. Uh, yeah. yeah. Israel, we have a dress code. Men and boys, no tank tops, flip flops, shorts, muscle shirts, sagging pants, hats, ribbons.